So this is my Home Assistant installation. You can see on the home page here, I've got lots of different cards. Just starting at the top, we'll go through. First, I've got a couple of CCTV cameras in here, done from the Blue Iris integration. And you see my doorbell installation here. Click on that and it gives you a live view. There are some very popular doorbell integrations that you can get. This one is just a UC doorbell camera that I've integrated into Home Assistant myself. Every time somebody rings the doorbell, I have an automation that activates a doorbell chime on all the echoes around the house, takes a picture and sends an email to me. Another CCTV camera here, which is the back garden. You can see here the solar panels up on the flat roof there. If you haven't watched my other video on the solar panel DIY, please take a look. Moving on to the solar panel card here. This one here, this solar one reading 109 watts currently. That's how many watts the solar panels are currently producing. The one down the bottom here is how much power I'm pulling from the grid at the moment. The arrow here means that I'm pulling, that's costing me. If it changed so that I um, produced too much solar that I'm, I'm actually using, the bottom arrow will change to zero and the top arrow will, will change to show how much power I'm pushing back to the grid. So at that point, I'm on free energy as it were. But at the moment, yeah, I'm pulling um, 760 watts from the grid. I'm producing 87 watts of solar and my home is consuming in total 839 watts there, which is the sum of um, the solar and what's coming from the, the grid. The cupboard up here that currently says 159 watts, um, that's a, a cupboard I have in my hallway that houses all of my network equipment. I use Unify network, so I've got switches in there and uh, Unify gateway and that also hosts a large server. It's not a server, it's a desktop computer with a 12 core AMD CPU, 64 gig of RAM, lots of storage. Um, and I use that um, desktop computer to host a KVM hypervisor. And on that KVM hypervisor, I run various VMs. You see here, I've got the Blue Iris installation here, which runs on a VM. Uh, that's a Windows VM. We've got a Home Assistant, which runs its own OS, uh, Plex Server, and Unify, and various other VMs that I, that I run for home projects and, and for work. Um, the card here below the solar panel is the Solax inverter that I have for my solar installation. Um, that has a Wi-Fi dongle in it, and that's connected to my network and all of these sensors here are part of the Solax Modbus integration in Home Assistant. And I'll take you through that in a moment. Um, the light card here has various bathroom lights, toilet light, kitchen light, lounge lamp, and so on. And they are these lights here. They're no neutral Zigbee controlled lights. Um, most UK homes previously, uh, new installations might be different, but uh, a lot of UK homes, it's popular not to have a neutral light going into the light switch. So it's just a live in and live out, meaning no neutral. And you can get these smart light switches for Wi-Fi and for Zigbee that have no neutral wire required. And those are the ones that I have here. Mainly because <laughs> my kids just leave the lights on all the time around the house, in the bathroom, toilet, their bedrooms, the lounge and so on. So in some rooms I've got PIR sensor to see if there's any motion. And after five minutes or 10 minutes of no motion, I just turn the lights out. Very handy. Saved me a lot of power. Um, this card here, the power consumption, lists various sensors that are to do with solar power generation and monitoring what's coming from the grid. And let's talk about this CT clamp power here. That's a CT Zigbee clamp, a bi-directional one. It's actually very good, very good price that clamps onto the positive of the grid power coming into your property and monitors the directional flow of the power. 
so it can tell whether the power is coming from the grid or being pushed back to the grid. It's very important because you need to know whether you're consuming or producing power. If I just click on CT clamp power, it will show us what the last 24 hour usage has been like. I can click on show more and it will take me this page where I can drill down and um, specify date and time ranges. So for example, um, if I only show today's usage from midnight last night up until, what's the time now? It's half past five in the afternoon. Let's do 6 p.m. for example, and select that. And you can see at 2 a.m. in the morning, for example, I was consuming 229 watts from the grid. That's my fridge, freezer, um, the, my cupboard, which is the, uh, the KVM hypervisor, my network, which runs 24 seven. So it consumes, you can see when the fridge comes on, that's gonna be consuming 200 and 300 watts and then drops down to 245. Um, seven o'clock comes and someone gets up and puts the TV on, makes a, makes a coffee, puts the kettle on. You can see here there's 3,446 watts there just momentarily where the kettle was boiling, someone was making a coffee. And then here is where the TV, um, someone's watching the TV in the lounge. Um, and as it goes on, um, my eldest son puts on his TV, the power, more power gets consumed. But go back to the main overview and have a look at the same for the solar power being produced. We have a look there, that's the last 24 hours. Uh, let's click on show more. And that shows the last 24 hours usage. Again, you can drill down. Let's do, let's do today's usage, so the 19th. Um, let's start at, you can see here, it, it, we didn't start getting, you know, when the sun comes up at 6.30 or something. So let's do 6.30 in the morning up until uh, 6 p.m. 1800 and select that. And you can see where the sun's coming up. Uh, we're starting to get 20 watts. Then the sun starts to hit the panels, clouds come out and so on. Um, today was quite a sunny day. You can see, what did we hit? Um, 1,500 watts there. It was uh, a sunny day with, with periods of cloud. So yeah, it was, it was quite a good production day. I've got four panels at 405 watts each. So a maximum of about 1.6 kilowatts it can produce. What's it gone up to there? It's gone up to its maximum of 1,600 watts there. And as the sun comes down, we can see um, as the sun gets lower and it, and it pivots round, my garden's more or less south facing, so you get quite a good production. Um, if you haven't watched my DIY solar video, please go back and watch that. That takes you through the whole process of how I installed it and what I bought and so on, and how much it cost, how much power we produce and so on. I've got a slight overhang, so as shadows start being produced around half past four, and that's when it really kicks down and you can start to get 123 watts, 105 and so on. Let's go back to here and you can see, for example, today's current total yield is 7.1 kilowatts. Um, if I show more and have a look over the past week, for example, so let's go from last Saturday to this Saturday uh, and select that. It's showing six days worth there. You can see on this day, I only got four kilowatt hours throughout the day. This one was a good day, 8.1, 7.7, um, 7.1, 7 7.3. Yesterday was um, quite a dark day, very cloudy drizzled most of the day, only got 3.6 kilowatt hours throughout the day. But today was quite a good day. We've got 7.1 kilowatt hours and it's still not over. We're still getting a bit more. If we carry on down here, look at the garden room card I've got here. I built a garden room during lockdown. Again, that's uh, another set of my videos. If you haven't watched that, please go back and, and watch those videos. And this card controls the lights and heating 
and temperature of, of that garden room. Again, these are Zigbee controlled garden room lights. So I've got three banks within the garden room and then I've got a garden room outside light, but I've got some problem with it at the moment. I need to, I need to check what that issue is. But I can control the lights from, from Home Assistant. Um, I've got a temperature sensor in there so I can set an automation in Home Assistant that if the temperature goes below a certain point, uh, the heaters come on and it can heat it and turn it off at a certain time as well. I'm also monitoring um, Bitcoin and Ethereum prices there. Up here, I've got a, a Hive heating setup, which is for my main house. That controls the gas combi boiler and I can control it from Home Assistant app or from here turn it on a certain time, temperature control and so on. I've also got a smart Samsung washing machine so I can control uh, the cycle of washing on there, turn it on, turn it off, monitor the power being used, see when it's gonna finish and, and, and so on. I've got a, a lot of Amazon Alexas around the house and this integration controls the volumes of them and you can send messages for example. So on here, And send that to my office one. This is a message. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, this gas meter over here is an old analog gas meter and I'm trialing some integration at the moment. It's not great. Hopefully, as you, you can see, it's uh, unavailable and disconnected. Hopefully I'm getting upgraded to a smart gas meter very soon, so I won't need this integration. So I won't get into that too much now. Let me scroll down. We can see some other cards here that are the different ways of displaying the same data within graphs and bar charts and, and so on. Over here, I've got the Octopus Energy card. I would highly recommend Octopus Energy. They've got great API integration within Home Assistant. If you're thinking of changing, please look at the referral link on this video and that would help me out. Okay, let's look at some of the back end of Home Assistant. All of these integrations are installed mostly via this devices and services. And you can see here the various integrations for some of the devices, the Alexa, a Blue Iris, the Hive integration, the Solax inverter mod bus, Octopus Energy, uh, Samsung Smart TV, Smart Things, which uh, there's a washing machine. I have a Ford car, so there's a Ford Pass there, and so on. And if we just take a look at the Solax inverter mod bus, uh, you come into here and click on that. It's one device, and these are all of the sensors which are included. And again, any one of these you can click on and it will take you to the 24 hour usage and show more. And you can drill down and show date range and time range and so on. And then scroll across and it will show you that in more detail. So as I've mentioned, most of my integrations are using Zigbee. Now, what is Zigbee? Zigbee is an integration where you have something called a gateway. So you have a Zigbee gateway that all of the devices connect to and then the Zigbee gateway connects to your network. Rather than all of these individual light switches being on Wi-Fi and connecting to your network, they all connect to the Zigbee gateway and then the Zigbee gateway sends that signal to your network. And that's all integrated via Zigbee 2 MQTT. If we click on that and take a look at that and you can see all of the installations here. To add a new Zigbee device to Home Assistant, you just click on this button here and then hold down a button on the device which puts it into pairing mode and then the device should pair with this with the Zigbee gateway and you'll see the new device appear here. Then you can select your device and rename it to something that you would recognize and then you can go in and it will show you the settings of that device. If we look at the CT clamp, where is the CT clamp down the bottom here? and exposes the current what is being used here is this one here so it's 750 watt and it is consuming power so that's costing me from the grid it's 757 watts being pulled from the grid if i'm producing so much solar and not using it that it's pushing power back to the grid this will change from consuming to producing and then display the wattage of what's being produced if i go down to office lights here and exposes and I can turn my office light on and off. You can hear the 
light switch change in there. Um, and it's all changeable via Alexa as well. So here, if we try and turn on the office lights via Alexa, Alexa, turn on the office lights. Okay. You can see they switch on there. Alexa, turn off the office lights. Okay. If you want to set up automations in Home Assistant, we can click on settings and automations and scenes. There are various different ways to set up automations. Some people prefer to set them up in the configuration file, which is written in YAML. It's quite an easy language to understand, but they have this automations page here, which is very simple to integrate automations into your Home Assistant setup. You can go create automation. Let's create a uh, normal automation. So what is the trigger? You can say the device, let's say the bathroom lights, when the bathroom lights are turned on and then at, don't want a condition action, let's say uh, device um, lounge lamp and the actions for that is turn lounge, turn on lounge lamp. So this is saying when the bathroom lights are turned on, then just turn the lounge lamp on as well. Now, why you'd want to do that, I don't know, but there's just to give you an example of the sort of automations that you can do, I can put in a, um, a temperature sensor, for example. So if I go here and go temp, this uh, garden room temperature, lux temperature, temperature changes, lux temperature, temperature changes um, above 25 degrees. So this is going to say, if someone turns on the bathroom lights and the temperature is above 25, then turn on the lounge lamp. There's any number of automations that you can make here, depending on the sensors that you have, or you, know, you can base it on a timer to say uh, at eight o'clock every night, turn on this light, nine o'clock, turn it off. Um, if the temperature is this, there's many different automations you can do. In my downstairs toilet, for example, I have a PIR motion sensor. And for that, I have an automation, which is this one here, which says if the toilet motion sensor occupancy comes on, then turn on the toilet light for six minutes. And then after that six minutes, it, if there's no activity, if there's no motion in the toilet, it will just turn it off again, which has saved me an awful lot of electricity, I'm sure. Kids are always leaving the downstairs toilet light on. If we have a look at the energy dashboard here, which is built into Home Assistant, you can see this top panel here. If I hover over it, it has got three sensors included in this top panel. The first one is grid power consumed. If I move up to where something else happens. So in this instance here, from 11 till 12 o'clock today, I produced 0.3 kilowatt hours of solar energy. It cost me 0.2 kilowatt hours of energy from the grid. And I pushed back to the grid 0.67 kilowatt hours. Very handy data to reference. On this solar production here, the gray dotted line is Home Assistant suggesting what solar I might get today. So it's just like an estimated value. And then these bars here, actually what I did produce. So at 11 o'clock, you can see I produced 1.2 kilowatt hours. 12, I produced 1.2 kilowatt hours. Two o'clock, I produced one kilowatt hour and, and so on. And with the Home Assistant Energy Panel, you can put in your cost of your electricity. And so it's telling me here, the grid power consumed today was one pound 84. So, so far today, I've spent one pound 84 on electricity. Now that doesn't include the, the daily charge.